my goodness. So excited to be back here. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day where I'm at and I have some very cool, powerful stuff to talk to you guys about. And that is brand positioning that books out. It books out. That means your client is full of dream clients and your calendar is full of dream clients. And that is a very exciting place to be in your business. Okay, guys, let's jump into it because there's a lot that I want to cover today. I wasn't in here last week as much because I was in the middle of four branding identity projects, which I am wrapping up. And these were some of the things that came out of that process. And I was like, you know what? I really feel like people would benefit from knowing these things that I'm walking my clients through. So what is brand positioning? Brand positioning defined in its simplest form is basically that process of setting your business apart in your client's mind, your dream client's mind. It's the thing that sets you apart from your competitors and keeps you front of mind. Um, and it's, it's your goal basically to associate yourself with a certain idea. So for example, a very easy example of this is if I say soda or pop or soft drink, depending on where you're from in the world, um, what is the word that pops into your mind? Coke, Pepsi, Fanta, Seagram's? Like what is the word that you immediately associate with soda or pop or soft drink, right? And so that word association like Coke or Pepsi is brand positioning. They have positioned themselves in their market, in their industry, so that when you think soft drink, you think this brand or this company, right? And so the reason why this is important as a business owner is that like when you have a well-defined brand position, it gives you a lot of advantages. Um, the first thing that it does is it provides this framework for, for you to hang your marketing messaging on. And it also helps you to develop the services that you deliver a little bit differently. Um, and then it also influences and informs how you structure your pricing. And that is a big deal because if you want to get booked out with dream clients, your prices have to make sense. And so here are some more key benefits, I guess, really of the brand positioning. Um, and one, the very first thing that it does is it really hones you in on a target market. And when you're able to become very specific about who you serve and how you serve them, that positions you as an expert and it creates perception as an expert. And I've said this before in other videos, but some of the um, celebrity or fame or expertise or authority, that's all perceived. That is all perceived and that is all within your control. And if you're an entrepreneur, it's your job to set a perception that causes people and compels people to want to work with you versus a competitor. And so the second thing that brand positioning does is it clarifies how you're different from your competitors. And so if you don't know, if you're an individual, if you have a personal brand, um, one of the best investments you could make in yourself and in your business is $13. It's called Strength Finders 2.0. And if you're a personal brand, this is the book I'm going to point people to every single time. If you've been in my community for any length of time, I love this book. I talk about it all the time. Do that. Um, it's going to help you understand what differentiates you as a person and how you can capitalize on that in your business. It's great. It's a great foundation book before working with a coach or a designer. If you get clarity on those pieces, you're going to come to the table with things that a designer or a coach can actually work with and help you to develop. Okay, the third thing it's gonna do is it determines how you're gonna nurture new clients or maybe even a pre-client or potential client. Um, and so this brand positioning is going to give you kind of a, a perspective of how you're gonna help overcome certain objections that will frequently come up when it comes to pricing or investment or length of time for a process, right? So if you're in the health industry, health and wellness and fitness, and someone's like, I want results in three days. And an objection you're going to have to overcome is that and say, mm, actually, we go slower and here's why. And you're going to overcome objections with 
uh, supporting evidence and other benefits and explain why your process or your method is different and better. So that is going to help you frame how you nurture and ultimately close a sale or write your sales pages if you are marketing something online. Next, it informs your creative decisions. And this is the part that I get really excited about because as a brand and business strategist and as someone who does brand identity development, this is the fun part. This is um, where the brand position informs the creative decisions. So that means when I am working on my core messaging and I know exactly who I'm talking to and I've worked on the tone and the voice with which I'm gonna to speak to my potential clients, then I get to create the visuals that represent those things at a glance. Is it cheeky? Is it funny? Is it formal? It depends, right? It depends on the position and the messaging that we're trying to establish first. Lastly, it's going to drive the service development and the pricing structure. And so when you are developing a service, perhaps you're a speaker and you are tired of going to other people's conferences, you wanna hold your own conference, it's going to inform if you're a soul driven, kind of like um, very high touch, very personal, personal brand as a speaker, then you may not have a conference for 400 people. You're going to have a 12 person retreat that is high touch, highly intentional. But if that's not you and your goal is to just be expansive and get your message out to the masses, then yeah, it does make a lot of sense for you to craft a conference that is going to maximize your reach. Cool. So it's going to drive the development of the service that you offer. If you're a speaker, it could like retreats or conferences. Those are totally different animals. Um, and then knowing how you price those things um, is also going to be informed by the position. Are you working with mompreneurs or are you working with high level CEOs? That's going to make a difference in how you price things and who you're going after. And so when you get clear on your positioning, there's five different types of brand positioning strategies. Um, and maybe strategy feels a little too intense, um, but there's, there's five brand positions and four of them will actually book you out. The fifth one will not, but it is the one that is the most common and it's a trap. So I want you guys to take note of that. Um, so when you are a professional service, and you are building a small business. Um, basically, you have five different options to position yourself for to set you apart from your competitors. The first one is cost, right? I do thing everything that everybody else does, but I do it cheaper. That is your positioning. That's the differentiator, okay? And so if you are um, a solopreneur and you are able to maximize softwares and systems and automations, you may not need to build a team and therefore you can keep your costs low. And that is what's going to drive people to want to work with you because it's the bottom line. It's, it's money, right? So cost driven positioning is the first strategy. The next one is niche specialization. And this is one that I think is really funny because yesterday I was in my yard and I was like, man, we have this really beautiful moss lawn. In the house that we bought, it was already pre-established for a moss lawn. We don't have a lot of grass. But in the last two weeks, we've had weeds everywhere. They're just popping up everywhere. And I was like, oh no, I don't want this beautiful moss lawn to get overrun with weeds. How do we manage it? Can we use weed killer? All of this stuff. Well, a niche service specialization is like this gal that I found. Her name is Moss and Annie, and she is all about moss lawns. And in the world of lawn care, which is vast, right? There's this little woman who is an amazing horticulturist and loves moss, knows everything about it and teaches people how to develop a moss lawn, which requires less work, less water, it's highly resilient, and it's really easy, really easy to work with, right? And so she has this niche service specialization for moss lawns only, it's a small niche, but she was exactly the person I was looking for and she had all my answers. I was like, oh my gosh, this woman, she is a genius. So that is niche service specialization. Industry specialization is very similar. So instead of just like a niche in general, you only work with certain industries. Maybe you only work with um, 
legal industries, or maybe you only work in medical industries, or maybe you only work in nonprofit industries. Um, this is something that um, can be a little risky, especially um, depending on what the industry is that you're going after. Um, it, it could be impacted by the economy. So it's, it can be a little bit tricky, but it is always better to specialize because when you can do that, it totally just takes your perceived expertise and your perceived authority to a different level. And that is something that people are, are going to buy into because they're like, this person knows my issue and my struggle and knows how to help me overcome it. And that is compelling for somebody who's ready to throw down money to get help. Lastly, um, and this is the last effective brand positioning strategy, and that is role-focused specialization. I had a client early on and she was a coach for high level um, CEOs and upper management, helping them to go to the next level in their careers or to deal with circumstances that were coming up in upper management. Um, she did team dynamic stuff. So she had a very specific role that she was going after in companies, Fortune 500 companies, CEO suite um, individuals. And so that is an example of role focused positioning. And this could also be mompreneurs. That is a role that requires thinking outside the box a little bit and understanding certain obstacles or objections um, that are standing in the way of somebody being able to succeed in what they're going after. So mompreneurs is also role focused target marketing. And then lastly, and this is the ineffective brand positioning strategy, is quality of service positioning. And again, this is the most common strategy and with very, very rare exceptions, does this work? Um, and, and so it's very easy to say like, oh, I'm su we're super committed to quality. We're gonna have the best services. We have the best team. Um, you are going, we have the best customer service. Um, so quality of service just doesn't work very well because it is just expected. If I'm going to purchase something from somebody, it should work, right? And so to say like, hey, we've got this thing and if you buy it from me, it'll work. It's like, all right, what else, right? That, that should be an assumption of like, this should work. This should make sense. Um, and so I always, that should just be part of what you do. Um, that is an expectation that clients have today and customers have today. So here's a quick template. I've dropped it in the description in the group. Um, I'm also going to be dropping it below where I'm going to be sharing this on my blog later. It's going to be in the show notes. So this is a brand positioning statement and you can fill in the blanks um, for your own business or your own self if you're a personal brand like I am. And I'll use myself as an example so that you guys can kind of wrap your heads around this. So it basically is going to run through a brief description of who you are, what you do, your target audience, your top benefits, your top differentiators, um, and then that's the, and any supporting evidence that you might have for those benefits. Here's what that looks like. I am Brittany, and I am a business and brand coach. I help other coaches and creatives, course creators, to find their first clients by creating a captivating and compelling brand. And as a brand strategist and business coach, I am able to help you develop that brand and teach you how to use it and get visible with it. Clients hire me because, and then I would list other differentiators, benefits, and supporting evidence. I have a fast turnaround time. I'm high touch. My clients get results. They're able to get their first or next client once they've started working with me, or they are able to grow their visibility and impact and reach. If money is not the bottom line, maybe it's impact and reach because I work with a lot of nonprofits. I love that world. It's one that I know very well. And so when we go through this, it is in, I am, this is who we are, a brief description of what you do, the type of services that you provide, who you help, your target audience. Uh, maybe it's mompreneurs, maybe it's high-level CEOs, and then the top benefits. 
And so this is the thing where I see a lot of people go a little bit sideways. They talk about what they do, coaching or like how they do it, but they don't really talk as much about the benefits of what they do. And really people aren't buying a drill because they really love drills. People buy drills because they want a hole in their wall or hole somewhere and they want a, a certain sized hole and they want it to look a certain way. It has a certain function. They're not buying drills because they like drills. They're buying drills because they want holes. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Um, so really think about the benefits that you're providing in your business to your dream clients and then articulate them in your brand positioning statement. Once this is very clear with your number one benefit, maybe a second top benefit, that's, if it's very closely tied together, go ahead and throw in some more benefits there. Um, but sometimes people go through this exercise and they find out that they don't feel like they have any top differentiators. And that's a problem because if you are going to have a brand that books out, you have to have a brand that stands out. So what happens if you feel like you don't have strong differentiators, what should you do next? Well, my first recommendation every single time is going to say, have you taken Strength Finders 2.0? If you haven't in your personal brand, that is your first step. It is $13. It is a very accessible investment and it takes about three hours total because the, the purchasing the book, right? takes a few minutes. Doing the assessment takes about an hour, hour and a half. Then you got to wait for them to send your results back. And then reading through your results, maybe it takes about 30 minutes. You got to think about it some. You're going to want to like look at some other things. Three hours, three hour investment in your business. It's going to bring a boatload of insights. Number two, if you feel like you know what your strengths are, or you know what you're very competent in, in your business, say for example, within the branding world, you're very competent at brand messaging or brand voice or brand visuals. Maybe you're a graphic designer and you really own the graphic design part of branding, or maybe within graphic design, you're very good at logos. Logos are an animal unto themselves. Um, so find the thing that you are highly competent and highly confident about and own it. Just go after it with everything that you've got. Maybe it's your sense of humor right? Maybe you're a copywriter and you just hate boring copy and you love to infuse humor and jokes um, to delight people as they're reading. And so it's just not like boring, 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 boring. Where's the meat of what I'm looking for? You're delighting them along the way. You're making them smile. You're bringing joy. If that is your thing, own it. And then lastly, your third option, one way to help you stand apart is to combine two traits and own both in in a certain sector. And this is kind of what I have done for my business. I really feel like my sweet spot is helping people understand where their brand connects to their business and how to make their brand work for them and to develop something that fits. I just was reading through Facebook this morning and someone said, I just get so hung up on logos. Every time I get one done, I've invested in services. It just doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel like it represents us well. And so if that is something that is going on, you can combine two traits. And now I have this ability to say like, hey, I can come in as a brand strategist and help you. And then as a business coach, I can teach you how to get visible and market with it. That is the sweet spot for me. And so maybe that is a sweet spot for you. Maybe it's not just owning one trait or owning the other, but combining them and helping people see where that connection happens. So once people can see where this crosses over and where the connection happens, then light bulbs go off and they say, oh, she doesn't just do this or just do that. She does both. And we really need help with both of those things. So sitting in that spot, X marks the spot, own it, claim it. That's your niche. That's your brand. That's going to captivate people. That's going to compel them to work with you. It's going to help them get results. And that is what matters at the end of the day. So this was a bigger um, tutorial this week. And so this is brand positioning that books out. If you need support around this, I have availability in my calendar for both mini intensives, as well as I'm taking on a small number of clients for my launcher legacy coaching program, which is my big six month program. It's very high touch. 
or hand holding the whole time. And we are going to get you booked out. At a minimum, we're gonna help you get those first or maybe that next client and give you a system that you can wash, rinse, repeat so you can continue doing it on your own. Very exciting stuff. I'm so thrilled to have you here in the community. Thank you for joining me and spending your time with me. I will see you guys around in the next one. Bye guys.